Where's the remote? Where's the remote? Do you ever find yourself in this situation? It's 2020, come on. This is not something we should be dealing with now. Either searching for the remote, or having to have half a dozen different remotes for different things. Well, here at M5 Stack, we've got a solution. And it doesn't look like this. Check this out. Welcome back to the M5 Stack official channel. I'm Luke and today I'm going to be showing you how we can use M5 Stack devices to replace your old fashioned remote controls. First up we'll need one of these M5 Stack devices which is capable of transmitting infrared such as the Stick C, the M5 Atom, the M5 Atom Lite or the old fashioned M5 Stick. Although I was able to find the codes online for the TV and the camera that I wanted to control, it can be a tedious process. There are a myriad of different standards between different manufacturers, and often even for the same manufacturer, the codes are different for different models. One way to speed things up is by getting one of these IR receivers and capturing the signals from your infrared remotes. What exactly is infrared and how do we use it to control our devices? Put simply, infrared is a type of light that's invisible to the human eye. When a button is pressed on a TV remote, it sends a sequence of timed pulses from the IR LED. These pulses are then captured by the device and converted or demodulated into specific codes. Each different standard has a specific way of converting these pulses into codes. We can mimic the behavior of this receiver by attaching this IRA module to our M5 stack device and using a specific library. There are various libraries that you can find for interfacing with infrared on GitHub and other platforms. This is the one that seemed to work best for me though. So let's first download this. Although this repository is called IO Remote ESP8266, it's also compatible with ESP32. Let's add the library from the zip file. Once we're done adding the library, let's go into examples. And first we're going to want to use the IR Receive Dump V2 program. Of course, if you no longer have the remote for the device that you want to control, you might need to do some digging online to find the codes. I was able to find the codes for this TCL TV quite easily from a quick Google search, and you should be able to too. If that's not the case and you still have the remote, we can always use this program to get the data from the remote controller. All we need to do is change a few things. First up, we'll change the pin. The IR receiver module which I'm using is connected through port A on the M5 stack fire. The signal pin is connected to the white wire which is GPIO 21. Next we have the board rate. Since we're going to be using the serial terminal to get the codes, we'll need to make sure that this is the same as it is set in the serial terminal. Now those are the only things we need to change. Upload to your M5 stack device and let's have a see on the terminal what comes out. Now that we have the dump of our remote's data, we can copy this in preparation for the next step. Now we need to go back into the IR examples, and this time open the IR send demo. I'm going to be programming the stick C to control my camera. For the other devices, you can check my GitHub for sample code. First up, I'll include the M5 stick library. Make sure you have this installed. Next, 
I'll change the IR LED pin to pin 9. You can find the IR LED pin numbers for other devices in the M5 stack docks. Now I want to replace this raw data segment with the data that I just captured. If you're modifying my code, you can do the same with the captures that you get. Next I'll remove this unnecessary code, which is intended just as a demo. In the setup section, I'll add the M5 begin function, and then strip the rest of this unnecessary code. It may be that this library already has support for one of your devices. If you have a look in the IR send header file, you can see a bunch of popular devices already have pre-programmed functions. Now I want the IR signal only to be sent when I press the button. So here I'll use an if condition and a function from the M5 stack library to check the state of the button. Next we can alter the serial print messages for debugging purposes. I can also add a display function so I get a message on the screen every time the button is pressed. Now I just need to edit this send raw data line so that it has the same number as my raw data dump. The last number, 38, is the 38 kHz frequency which is the standard that most remotes use. If your remote is using a different frequency, this likely won't work so you'll have to check the details of the specific manufacturer. Now I'll send over the code to my device. A good way to test whether your device is emitting the pulses is to point it towards a phone camera. My iPhone wouldn't pick the pulses up, but my laptop camera did. This is due to some cameras having IR filtering built in. Now to test it on the device. Of course, for a simple application like this, one button is sufficient. But if you want to use a device that requires multiple buttons, you could program it so that one button cycles through the options and the other executes them. Or you could use a menu system such as the Lovian Launcher, like in this video. This user is also using the IR unit, which also should be compatible with this project. As usual, I'll place all the links to information down in the description below. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, please leave a comment. Make sure to like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.